If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of your life to hold on to and build as much muscle mass as possible, what would they be? High bar squats, pull-ups for the back. These are just my personal spirit exercises. What about weight? The weight you end up using is whatever weight gets you within five to 30 reps range, close to failure. Why not to failure? I, I don't know if there's 10 muscle groups. These are just my personal, the ones I really like. That doesn't mean they're best for everybody. They can't be, and I can talk about that afterwards of what the stimulus fatigue ratio actually means. But I'd say high bar squats. Uh, Why? Because they hit the quadriceps and adductors and glutes very well. The amount of fatigue you get from them is less than you would with other types of squats like low bar squats. Because until my arms got too big to hold a bar on my back, uh, I fit into the high bar position like a glove, and I love that. I would say the over standing overhead barbell press, just because I'm like really good at it, and it feels great for me to do until I guess my arms are not too big. I can't do that either, so that's fun. Is there anything in that where the bracing, the midline bracing is good for just other stuff generally? Yeah, it's good for like manhood strength. Like if you can overhead press two plates for reps, like you're serious mother people should with you probably. So that's cool for that, for sure. Um, and then I would have to say skull crushers for triceps, barbell, skull crusher. Uh, how many are we at? Three. Three. Um, Pull-ups for the back, overhand, uh, chin to bar. Why overhand, not underhand? Uh, raw personal preference. I can't rotate my in enough to do underhand anymore. I have slowly become more disabled as I became more jacked. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, there's like an ability curve where you get better at it and then you get worse at it. <laughs> So, uh, barbell bent rows from a deficit, get two barbell for the back. Barbell bent rows from a deficit. Mm -hmm. So you okay. stand on a little box and yep. you can go super deep in the stretch and then touch your tummy and come back. Any reason for doing that as opposed to a chest supported or a seal? Manhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen a seal in Antarctica? They're pathetic. They always need to be rescued. There's babies and stuff. That. No. Are we five deep now? I think we're five deep. I haven't been keeping track. I think it's five. I think five. it's five. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Five more. Uh, let's see what else. Stiff legged deadlift for the hamstrings and the glutes. You wouldn't have hit that enough with your bent over rows? No, not even close. Yeah, it's isometric only with bent over rows. You need a dynamic movement for the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. um, it also hits a crap load of your spinal erectors and glutes and all this other stuff. Okay, six. Uh huh. And then we have um, the, ooh, yeah, I have to say, the cambered bar bench press for chest. That's the one that does like this? The, the, the like bendy the pale. Why the camber bar, why? The camber bar is allows you to go deeper than your own chest level. And we have lots of research, especially recently, but lots of good theoretical work before that shows us that a deep stretch is a, a pretty big deal for hypertrophy. It enhances the amount of muscle growth you get rep for rep. It also feels amazing and ultra challenging. And if you do bench presses with a regular bar afterwards, you're like, oh my God, this is easy as hell because it's a huge partial. So I would say I'll take an incline version of cambered bar bench mm -hmm. as an exercise, but at seven, I'll take dips mm -hmm. in addition to that for the lower pecs and just overall manliness. Dips are sweet. Good amount of triceps as well. We've got long, totally. heads, long yes. head on the yes. overheads. Yes. Yep. And uh, what do we got? Two left? Yeah. So what are we missing? We haven't done side delts yet, yeah. no. So I would say super ROM laterals for side delts. And you literally made your own exercise, kind of. A few, yeah. I, I need more ego. So let's just start calling them Dr. Mike laterals. Yes. Dr. Mike everything. It's where you do dumbbell laterals, but you don't stop here. You just go all the way and kind of touch your palms together at the top. Can you do that? Oh, I used to be able to. <laughs> With enough weight, I can get it up there. Um, <laughs> but then I kind of choke myself at the top. Yeah. Um, so I'll take those for most of the rest of the delt. And I will say the bent rows and the pull-ups take care of the rear delt quite well. Um, and then I'll say seated incline dumbbell curls for biceps. So boom, like that. Again, it's tension at the stretch, great exercise. All right, how about rep ranges and how heavy to lift? Yes, for there are recommended target rep ranges for every single human physical quality that we know. So for example, for strength, basic strength building is like sets of three to six repetitions. You do a whole lot fewer than six, let's use, you do singles. You can get stronger doing singles, but you could have gotten stronger because you would have gotten more volume doing still very heavy weight if you did like sets of four. It's just not an efficient use of your time. Still works not as efficient. Can you get stronger doing sets of eight? Yes, but 
you get a lot of hypertrophy work from eight, but uh, if you do a, your eight rep max, it's just not heavy enough. Like sets of three to six would be for you to get as much strength out of it as possible. So these are all spectrum ranges. There's not like at some repetition it begins before it, you get nothing and then you get all the hypertrophy. And then after you get no hypertrophy, it's kind of more of a normal distribution kind of situation. But for hypertrophy, it seems that anything roughly between sets of five repetitions that are challenging close to failure and all the way to 30 to 35 repetitions seems to be on average for the average person, for the average muscle in medium term, several months of testing to promote almost, uh, I'll say it better, undifferentiable amounts of muscle growth. So we got a group of people training sets of five to eight, got another group of people training sets of 25 to 28 reps. As long as they go close to failure and it's the same exercise, wow. they get essentially the, on average the same results. Now, within a different muscle, it could be different. Some people's biceps respond really well to heavy sets of five to 10. You do sets of 25 to 30, they just get tired and they don't have much hypertrophy. It works differently between individuals too. But the overarching theme is anywhere between sets of five and sets of 30 is kind of uh, unlikely to be a ton of really wrong answers. What about weight? The amount of weight that you choose should fall into two categories or two kind of clearance variables to make sure it goes through. One is, can you lift it to, with good technique, between five and 30 times in one set? And two, is that exhibition of your lifting at least within three reps-ish of failure? Because people will say like, you give someone 10 pound dumbbells that can lift the 30s and they do five and they put it down, they're like, hypertrophy, I hit five, like, yeah, but, but the caveat there is that you have to challenge the muscle. So the weight you end up using is whatever weight gets you within five to 30 reps range close to failure. Why not to failure? To failure is a totally fine thing as well. There are downsides of going to failure all the time. Uh, it seems that as you get closer to failure, the amount of stimulus per set rises. So if you have a set where you stop at two reps shy of failure and another person has a set where they stop just at failure or some, someone has to drag the barbell off of them, the person who went to failure is going to grow more muscle. That's a good thing, but it's by a small margin, maybe just several percent more growth. The downside is training to failure generates a lot more fatigue, probably not a few percent more, maybe a few dozen percent more, which is a big deal. If you're going to use a program which mostly has you do three or two or one rep shy of failure, you'll get great stimulus and you'll be able to recover from lots of sets over the course of weeks and months, which means you'll get a great stimulus and a great hypertrophy result. If you insist on going to failure even beyond in your sets, you can get very good results, but you have to reduce the total volume of your training because the amount of fatigue you accumulate is going to be rapid. It's going to happen fast. 